What's up everybody? I'm Scott. Hope you're doing well. Hope you're feeling healthy and I hope you're staying safe. I'm doing well today. In fact, I'm doing really, really well because guess what? I found an old hard drive in a closet. And what's on this hard drive, you ask? Well, it's filled with porn. More specifically, it's filled with hashtag guitar porn. But before I go through the contents of my guitar porn filled hard drive, if you're new here and this is your first time watching one of my videos, welcome. My name is Scott Bino, and here on YouTube, I like to make videos related to guitars, amps, pedals. So if you dig shootouts, tutorials, reviews, demos, things like that, you will probably dig my channel. So go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Doesn't cost you anything, takes two seconds, and it helps me grow the channel. Also, be sure to hit that little bell icon to turn on notifications so you can get notifications as to when I upload a new video. If you've been here before and you're already subscribed, thank you so much for coming back. Really appreciate your support. You are the reason why I keep making videos. All right, so the contents of this hard drive are exciting to me and maybe exciting to you because I found photographs and a whole bunch of information on guitars that I've owned through the years, upwards of 50 or 60 guitars, many of which I forgot I even had. So it was really cool to find this thing. But more specifically, I found photos and information from a bunch of Dimebag Daryl signature model guitars that I've owned throughout the years. Some are more generic that aren't that exciting that you can find on Reverb and eBay every so often, but I also found a handful of photos from some pretty rare guitars. So why am I making this video? Well, a few weeks back, I posted a video of my Dean from Hell commemorative limited edition number 41 of 100 ever made. And I did talk a little bit about some of the guitars that I had owned in the past. That video seemed to spark some interest in the Dimebag community because in that video, I mentioned a couple of the Washburn Blood Bolts that I had owned way back in the day. And if you don't know anything about the Washburn Blood Bolts, well, I will talk a bit about them later in the video. So what I wanna do today is go through all of the Dimebag guitars that I found photos of and information on and talk to you a little bit about those guitars. I'll talk a bit about how I acquired each guitar and give a little bit of a rundown of the spec of each guitar to the best of my knowledge. I'll also share with you my opinion and my assessment on how each of these guitars sounded and played. So the order of this video is not going to go in order in which I own the guitar or the age of the guitar, but instead I'll start with some of the more generic guitars and end off with some of the more rare and sought after guitars. And before I get a bunch of comments from people asking, hey man, can I buy that guitar off of you? Well, unfortunately, Unfortunately, I sold most of these guitars years ago. In fact, some of the more rare guitars I sold in like 2002, 2003 before Dimebag died. Do I wish I still had those guitars? Yes, I regret it every day selling some of these guitars because some of these things are so rare and so sought after, but at the time, I had no idea. And yes, I knew they were rare and I knew they were special, but never in my wildest dreams would have I imagined they would have become this valuable today. Just as a quick example, the price that I used to pay for USA Washburn Dime 3 guitars is less money than what the import Dime 333s go for today. And not just like a little bit less money, like significantly less money. The prices of these guitars is nuts. All right, so let's jump into it. Let's go through some of the cool and rare and awesome Washburn and Dean Dimebag Daryl guitars that I've been lucky enough to own through the years. All right, so first up guys, we have a 2004 Washburn Camo V. Now these are sort of like weird guitars because Dimebag never actually played these Vs. My gut's telling me they probably released these things for a market that didn't necessarily want like the full ML shape. Uh, so they created a V, which is sort of close enough, I guess, to kind of the metal looking guitar but a little bit smaller, lighter, easier to handle, I guess, for some that didn't want that full ML. These were made in China. I think I bought this thing used for like 130 bucks or 140 bucks Canadian. They were pretty shitty. Honestly, they didn't play all that well. They didn't sound that great. Uh, the nut was a piece of shit. Uh, they looked cool. It's also a little bit weird. This guitar had 24 frets. Dimebag played guitars with 22 frets. So I don't know why this particular model had 24. Uh, if you do know, leave a comment in the comments below to let me know, I'd love to know. Oh, also neck dive. This thing had fucking terrible neck dive because of the weight of the headstock with the tuners on it and stuff. The length of the neck, the shape of the body and where the strap buttons were placed. This thing was unplayable standing up with a strap. You literally had to hold the neck up the entire time you played it. It was super weird. If you're looking for one of these guitars and you wanna buy one of these guitars, my recommendation is keep your expectations fairly low in terms of feel and sound. They look cool. Honestly, don't spend more than 200 bucks Canadian on one of these things. I've seen them sell for a lot more money than that. They are really not worth it. All right, so next up is the cutest Dimebag guitar you can buy, a three quarters length Baby ML. And this is with you know, the lightning bolt motif. It looks really cool. It's really awesome. I bought this for my son. He's five years old. It's still a little bit too big for him, but this guitar is just really cool. I wanted one 
just like mine so he could have one to match. And I love this guitar, they're a lot of fun. Don't expect much in terms of like playability and quality and sound. If you have a chance to buy one of these guitars and it's not too much money, go ahead and pick it up because they're kind of cool. I don't think they're gonna make them anymore. I believe they made these in 2005 for about a year. They came with like a starter pack with like an amp and like a little gig bag and stuff like that. I didn't get any of that. I uh, only got the guitar when I bought it used. I think this guitar I paid like 200 Canadian if I remember correctly. Next up is a, oh, it's a 2006 Dean Dimal Flame. I still have this guitar, I got it as a gift. It is made in Korea. It's actually a decent guitar. The made in Korea Deans that I've played are actually quite good. In my opinion, they are better than a lot of the Chinese made guitars. The Korean guitars to me feel and sound a little bit better. It's just my opinion. Pretty well made guitar. It feels solid. It sounds pretty good. It has the Seymour Duncan Dimebucker in the bridge and it has that cool flame graphic on the front. Rumor has it, this was the guitar that Dimebag was playing on the night he was taken from us. I don't know if that's true. Maybe somebody who knows better than me can confirm that, but that's what I've heard. I don't know, I find these guitars kind of cool. The flame looks really neat. They play okay. The neck is really thick though, I have to say. It doesn't feel at all like any of the USA Washburn D3s or the USA Deans that I've owned. It's got sort of like this baseball bat, really thick kind of Les Paul style neck, which is a little bit weird. I was sort of caught off guard when I first picked up this guitar. It didn't feel like any other Washburn or Dean guitars I'd ever played. Okay, so next up we have, oh, okay, this is this was a weird one. This is the uh, Washburn Dimebag DB40 bass. So when I bought this guitar, it was sold to me as the prototype of the Washburn Dimebag Daryl basses. I don't know if that's true. I have nothing to say that that is accurate. I can't remember. I think I tried to reach out to Washburn at the time. This is going back to... I wanna say 2002, 2003 maybe that I owned this bass. I can't remember what the response was or if I even got a response, but anyways, it was sold to me as a prototype of the Washburn Dimebag ML basses. I don't know what else I can say. It was a bass. Um, there's a headstock there. It had kind of the skull and crossbones inlay, which was kind of cool. It was just okay. It just, it was kind of awkward in my opinion. The ML shape as a bass for me personally isn't the most comfortable thing. It's really strange to me, but that's just my personal opinion. I know some people love it. I just prefer the ML shape as a guitar. Um, as a bass, it was just all right. There's not really much else to say. Okay, what do we have next? Aha, oh, <laughs> so this is the, um, this was a 2008 Dean 10,000th commemorative Razorback. So when they, I guess, made their 10,000th Razorback guitar, they decided to do this sort of special edition diamond tread plate thing. From a distance, it looked cool, but up close, this thing was kind of wonky. It was a little bit strange. Korean made guitar, I wasn't the biggest fan of it. I don't think it sounded that great. It was really light. It actually felt really cheap. This guitar felt like it weighed like two pounds. Um, it just felt like the components and the wood and everything just didn't feel like quality. I don't know if that makes sense, but it, it it didn't have any weight to it at all. And the top was really, really, really cheap. That sort of diamond tread plate top was like paper thin almost, like a paper thin piece of plastic. And I understand, you know, not putting a piece of metal on there because it would weigh the guitar down. It would probably fuck with the sound of the guitar too much. So I get why they didn't do that, but I feel like they could have used something a bit thicker and a little bit higher quality. Seriously, it didn't actually sit flat on the face of the guitar. Like if you ran your finger across and sort of looked at the edges, you could see little parts of it between the screws where it would sort of come up in this little hump. Um, and you could sort of like push it up and down. It was really, really cheap. And it's strange to me because this guitar right now, if you look on reverb and the used market for this, it's gone really, really high. I don't know why that is, but the asking price for these guitars, I guess because it's like a limited edition guitar, is super high. But just to give you an example, I think like four or five years ago, maybe more, maybe six years ago at the time of filming this video, I might've paid like 600 bucks Canadian for the guitar. And yeah, that's just the back of that headstock to sort of let you know what the model of that Razorback was. And up next we have, aha, a couple of Washburn culprits. So the Washburn culprit, for anybody that doesn't know, it has been said to be the first guitar that Dimebag actually designed, and they're pretty hard to come by these days. They were Korean-made guitars. They came in a wine red, I guess you'd call it, and a black with a cream binding. Really awesome looking guitars, kind of like a weird sort of explorer inspired shape. They were a lot of fun to play. The necks were really comfortable. They were very thin. Again, these necks didn't feel at all like anything like the 
USA Washburn necks or the USA Dean necks. There was something totally different about them. Pretty thin, different neck profile, but super comfortable to play. And what I really liked about them on the back, if you look at these photos here, it had a really deep belly cut. They were just super comfortable to play. And you can see the headstocks are very sort of explorer inspired headstocks. And the interesting about these guitars is they didn't have Dimebag's name on them anywhere. It literally just said Washburn. I know some of them that I've seen the truss rod would say, I think it says like CP 2003 or something like that, I think was the model name or number. Uh, somebody write a comment in the comments below to let me know if I'm, I'm messing that up. But this is how these guitars came when I had them with just the blank uh, truss rod covers and it just says Washburn across it. And uh, yeah, there's a couple of shots of the guitars on the couch. The story goes with these guitars too. And I don't know if this is true. So somebody who knows this story, somebody who either knew Dimebag or worked at Washburn, feel free, if you're watching, feel free to leave a comment in the comments below to let us all know. But the story goes that this was never to be a production model. So Washburn asked Dimebag, hey, how many of these should we make? And his response was, let's make 52 of each color because he was really into, you know, cards and gambling and things like that. And so 52 cards in the deck, figured let's make 52 of each model. Again, I don't know if that's true. If somebody can verify that, that new dime bag or that worked at Washburn at the time that knows anything about these guitars, if you're watching this, please leave a comment in the comments below. Let's verify this. I know there's a lot of people that are interested to know how many of these were produced. Based on the used market and how many of these that I see out there and how much they come up, I know these are probably pretty limited in terms of production. Just how many? Not totally sure. Would love to know. All right, so up next we have a, oh, a 2006 Dean Rust Razorback Tribute. I'm just gonna go ahead and say it. This guitar was up there, top shelf, up there with some of the best dime bag guitars I've ever owned in terms of quality, in terms of feel, in terms of fit, in terms of finish. This guitar is hard to match. Very, very well-made guitar. The story goes is that they made 333 of these, Dimebag's favorite number. I heard a rumor that they didn't actually make all 333 due to cost. Again, I could be wrong. Somebody please, if you know the answer to this, leave a comment in the comments below. Um, but I have heard that they didn't actually finish all 333. Again, could be wrong. These are all hand-painted. They all look a little bit different. You can actually see a handful of them right now, I think on Reverb for Sale. And if you look at them closely, there are some differences between them because they're all somewhat unique. The quality was out of this world. They were super heavy, really hard to play for a long time. They weighed a ton, but it was a really solid, really well-made guitar. Dean Custom Shop stuff, for those that don't know, if you've never played a Dean Custom Shop guitar, you are missing out. They are top shelf, really high quality guitars. If you have a chance to buy one, do it, you will not regret it. So this paint job and this sort of motif, to my knowledge, was one of the earlier first designs that Dimebag had for the Razorback and was to be the color and sort of the paint job that was to be released with the first models of Razorbacks that were supposed to come out. As we all know, unfortunately, Dimebag was killed before that could happen. And so in 2006, Dean decided to put out this tribute series in limited quantities for the public to buy. And I believe too now at the time of filming in 2021, Dean is now releasing a production model of this guitar that you can buy with a similar motif. I've seen the pictures of it, it looks pretty awesome. I'll go ahead and just say it from the photos that I've seen. They don't look as good as these ones. These are all hand-painted custom shop guitars, so they don't look as good, but it's still cool that they're, um, that they're bringing them back. So the spec on this guitar had a very similar neck profile and shape to the Washburn Dime 3s that I've owned in the other USA custom shop Dean guitars that I've had. It's very true to that shape. The neck pickup was a DiMarzio Super Distortion and the bridge was a Seymour Duncan Dimebucker. Again, can't say enough good things about this guitar. It just looks awesome. I've got a couple more shots of it so you can see uh, just how cool that looks, that paint job. And yeah, there's a back, you know, custom paint job on the back as well, all through the guitar, the back and the neck as well. Um, and here's some close-up shots. You can really see like the detail and how cool uh, this looked up close. It's got that like silver pinstripe around the bevels. I mean, man, this thing was awesome. This looked really cool. All right, up next we have, ooh, one of my holy grail guitars. This is a 1999 Washburn D3 Dimebolt. This thing was dead mint, factory fresh, felt like it hadn't been touched. One of the nicest looking, cleanest dime bolts I'd ever seen. This was one of my sort of most sought after guitars growing up. I needed to own this guitar and it was, I was so happy when I finally found it. Dead man condition. It had one of the nicest sort of um, natural backs. Uh, there's a photo of it there uh, that I've seen on these guitars. So a lot of the Dimebag, USA Dimebag models had these natural backs. Some of the later Dimebolts and some of the 
uh, custom shop ones and a, uh, the, the blackjacks all had black backs, whereas the dime slimes and dime bolts had these really cool uh, natural backs. This was one of the nicest ones that I'd seen. Guitar played phenomenally. You really can't beat uh, USA Washburns. And this one was really cool. And I tried to get a shot of this on the back of the mahogany neck. You have this flame, which is not typical of mahogany to get a flame in the wood. And this one had that, which is really, really, really cool. All right. So next up is, oh, this is one of my favorite diamond guitars I've ever owned. I still own this guitar. Love this guitar. It is a 2015 Dean from Hell commemorative limited edition. Not to be confused with the 2005 models that they came out with. Those, I think they made 150 of those. These ones are the more recent ones. They made 100 of these. This one is number 41 of 100. Not much to say about it other than it's like an awesome sounding, awesome playing, awesome looking guitar. Like I said, it's easily one of the best ones that I've played. It sits right up there with the USA Washburn Dime 3s that I've owned. The super cool thing about these is that the COAs were all signed by Vinnie Paul, so that's really cool. And it was modeled after the original Dean from Hell. They took Dimebag's guitar, they weighed it, they tried to get everything, the spec as close to as possible as his original guitar. And this one has the Bill Lawrence pickup in the bridge. It's got the DiMarzio Super Distortion in the neck the top mounted Floyd Rose. It's got, you know, the replica of the Dean from Hell on the headstock logo. Uh, just a great all around guitar. If you can find one of these guitars, uh, pick one up. I think they've gotten pretty expensive now. I think the asking price of these guitars has gotten kind of through the roof. But if you can find one for a decent price, great guitar, you won't be disappointed. Up next we have, ooh, ooh this is also another Holy Grail guitar for me. This was my 2000 Washburn D3 Dime Slime. Easily, easily one of the nicest maple tops I've seen on not just a dime bag guitar, but like any guitar, period. I've got some other photos I'm gonna show you in just a second, but this top was just out of this world. It had this sort of 3D flame going on. The stuff that Washburn was doing in the late 90s, early 2000s was seriously unparalleled. The quality of the guitars coming out of the shop at that time was phenomenal. If you've had a chance to own a late 90s, early 2000s Washburn dime bag guitar. You'll know what I'm talking about. They are really, really, really well made. They look beautiful, fantastic guitars. Got some more photos of it here in the case. Uh, there's the matching headstock, super cool. Uh, this also had the natural back. Again, the natural back on this one was really, really nice as well. Probably not as nice as the dime bolt that I had, but this was, I mean, this was pretty nice. And yeah, so what I did is I took this guitar. I had another case, one of the black sort of molded washburn cases for another guitar that I'm going to show you in a second. And I put it in that case just to take photos of it to show the contrast. And you can really see how amazing that top is. I mean, holy shit, look at that top. Seriously, I kick myself every day. I have regrets of selling this guitar because... Look at this thing. I've seen a bunch of dime slime guitars, but I'm sorry, I'm pretty sure this is the nicest dime slime top I've ever seen. It is just phenomenal. If you have this guitar out there, you are very lucky. I'm very jealous. I wish I kept it. All right, last, but certainly not least, and probably the guitars, the reason why 99.9% .9 of you have watched this video is, drum roll, the Washburn Dimebag Blood Bolts. So these guitars are, like the holy grail, I think for any Dimebag fan, I think I speak for all of us, are some of the most awesome, brutal, sickest looking Dimebag guitars ever made. And I somehow ended up with two of these things. This is going back to 2000, 2001, maybe 2002. I can't remember exactly when I had these guitars. Now, according to Washburn, there was only four of these ever made. I spoke to Washburn at the time because I remember when I got the first one, I was like, this looks really strange. This looks really cool. I can't even remember how I ended up getting the guitar. I think it was like off of eBay or something like that. I emailed Washburn or called him. I can't remember. And they told me and they confirmed. I gave them a serial number. I told them what the guitar looked like. And they said, yeah, we made four of those guitars as prototypes. One of them went to Dimebag. They said Dimebag had one of them. And the other three were just like released to the public or employees. I can't remember what the story was. Anyways, I somehow found a second one and I purchased it. So I ended up having two of the guitars and I thought it was really cool at the time. And I was like, oh, I've got more of these. I called them Red Bolts at the time because that's what they were communicated to me as previously. Washburn, if I remember correctly, was calling them Red Bolts. But I think today everybody calls them Blood Bolts. I can't remember the lineage and the name change there, but that's what sort of people refer to them as now. And I remember getting the second one and thinking, oh, this is so cool. I've got two and Dimebag only has one. I saw the last one, the fourth one was also floating around on eBay and I was gonna buy it, 
Um, because I was thinking like, oh, how cool would it be to have three of the four and Dimebag's got the other fourth of these guitars ever made? And I kicked myself now because I didn't buy because I thought it was too expensive. Just to give you an idea, at that time, I think the seller was asking like $1,300 Canadian for it, which is like mind blowing because like $1,300 for a prototype one of four ever made USA Washburn Dimebag guitars today. I don't even want to like guess or suggest how much one of these guitars would sell for for today. But just to give you an idea, that seller was asking 1,300 Canadian for it. These two, I think the first one I bought for 1,400 Canadian and the second one I bought for like 1,800 Canadian. I mean, you can barely buy one of those imported Washburn 333s for that price. I mean, they're going for more than that right now, I believe on Reverb and eBay and stuff like that. So the price that I paid for these is just like ridiculous. Uh, and I kick myself for selling these guitars. I wish I still own these guitars. They're super awesome. If you're watching this and you're out there and you have one of these, consider yourself very lucky. Don't make the mistake I made. Don't sell it unless you really, really need the money. But hold on to it, man. Like these guitars are just special. They're super awesome. So I've got some more photos I'll share with you now. One thing I wanna mention is the guitar on the left. Well, both guitars actually have the Bill Lawrence pickup in the bridge. The one on the left has a Seymour Duncan 59 and the one on the right had some other unmarked kind of flipped zebra pickup that didn't have any logo on it. So I'm not sure what that pickup was. And I never, if I remember correctly, I don't even think I took it out to look, but I don't recall what that pickup was. The cool thing in this shot too, is you can actually see how different these guitars were. Not only is the natural burst out to sort of black, slightly different between the two guitars, but even the lightning bolt itself is painted like totally different, but both look awesome. Both have the red binding all around the body, all up the neck and all around the headstock as well. I've got some more photos I'll step through because I know a bunch of you want to see these. Uh, yeah, man, look how sick those guitars are. Why did I sell them? I know there's a lot of people that want these guitars and I've had people reach out to me saying, hey, Scott, can I buy them? I wish I could sell them to you. Actually, no, I don't wish I could sell them to you. I wish I had them so I could say, no, I can't sell them to you. But unfortunately, no, I can't sell them to you because I don't have them anymore. Here's some shots of, I think this is the one that was on the right. Yeah, this is the one that was on the right in the previous photos in the case. Yeah, so this is it in the case. Uh, some more shots, you can take a look at that. There's the headstock. So this was like sort of a raised kind of metallic looking, I guess it was a sticker, but you could kind of feel it when you ran your fingers across the top of it. Back of the headstock, typical volute. Here's a blurry photo of the headstock. Way to go, Scott, nice blurry photo. Yeah, this was uh, this is like 2000, 2001. I didn't have a great camera, sorry. And here's another blurry photo, amazing. Great job, great photography skills. Here's a blurry photo of the fucking nut. And another blurry photo. Here's a blurry photo of the three-way switch. I don't know what I was doing here. I guess I was trying to get some close-up shots of the top. Oh, here we go. This is a little bit better. A non-blurry photo of the knobs. No, but here's cool. You can really see kind of how that lightning bolt looks up close and some dusty up close pictures of the Bill Lawrence 500 pickup and a slightly less blurry photo showing the Rosewood fretboard. And then again, another blurry photo of the truss rod cover. It says Dime 3. And then a close-up of the headstock of this one. So you'll notice too, the difference between these two guitars also was not just the way the flame was painted, but this one had a red logo on the headstock and the other one had a silver kind of metallic looking headstock. And I think, yep, that is it. That is the last photo I have to share with you from my porn filled hard drive. All right, everyone, that is it. Thank you for watching. Thank you for taking the time to watch my stupid face talk about Dimebag Daryl guitars. Seriously, I could talk about Dimebag and Dimes guitars all day long, and I know most Dimebag fans and fans of Dimebag's gear also could too, so I hope you dug this video. If you enjoyed this video, please go ahead and hit that thumbs up button, and if you haven't already subscribed to the channel, now is a wonderful time to hit that subscribe button. Takes two seconds, costs you nothing, and it helps me grow the channel. All right, everyone, that'll do it, and remember, stay safe, and stay heavy. Peace out.